Hi, my name is Dr. Bryn Huguenel, and I'll be presenting research that I conducted with Loyola University Chicago's PACE Lab, which stands for Promoting Adjustment in Children Through Evaluation and is led by Dr. Scott Leon. This research is entitled Profiles of Maltreatment in the Child Welfare System, Predicting Mental Health Outcomes and Examining Age as a Moderator. The full manuscript was published in the Journal of Traumatic Stress in August of 2021. The majority of youth in the child welfare system have a history of, of, of multiple forms of maltreatment rather than a single type or isolated experience. Given the incremental effect of traumatic experiences on subsequent um, development and well being, it's critical for research to capture these nuances in children's histories. As such, research has increasingly explored unique combinations or profiles of maltreatment for youth in the child welfare system. More recently, this work has even been taken a step further by examining the connections between these different maltreatment profiles and then children's subsequent functioning. While outcomes of internalizing symptoms and externalizing behaviors have been included in prior work, we were surprised to see a pretty limited focus on post-traumatic stress symptoms when considering outcomes. Given the categorization of childhood maltreatment as a traumatic event that could in turn lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, we felt that it was important to explicitly explore those connections within our study. And from a developmental perspective, children may exhibit symptoms after traumatic events that don't fit cleanly into a PTSD diagnosis. And so we focused more broadly on post-traumatic stress symptoms, such as re-experiencing and avoidance in order to cast a wider net. This is also consistent with the idea that complex trauma like maltreatment in the sense that it's interpersonal, um, it's prolonged, occurs early in life, complex trauma can result in a range of symptoms that can't be captured solely by those that are listed in the criteria for PTSD. Despite theory suggesting that the impact of maltreatment on youth functioning can extend into subsequent stages of development, Research exploring the role of timing and developmental stage on psychological outcomes is limited. So for these reasons, uh, the present study had three aims. So first, we really wanted to identify different unique profiles of maltreatment among children in the foster care um, of the sample that we were exploring. Second, we wanted to examine whether profile membership predicted different mental health outcomes over time. And third, we really wanted to explore um, whether age moderated the relationship between those profiles and the subsequent functioning. Our hypotheses were that uh, there would be three main profiles. Um, so one consisting mostly of uh, neglect, one consisting of a combination of neglect and physical abuse, and then a third that was a combination of neglect, physical abuse, and sexual abuse. We also predicted that higher levels of neglect and physical abuse would predict uh, greater levels of internalizing symptoms, whereas the combination of the three, so neglect, physical abuse, and sexual abuse, would um, confer greater risk for externalizing behaviors and post-traumatic stress symptoms, or PTSS. And then the third aim, um, exploring age as a moderator, was largely exploratory. Data for the study uh, were collected as part of a larger project conducted by the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services called the Recruitment and Kin Connections Project. This larger project um, focused on expanding child welfare practices by identifying social support for youth. Um, participants in this particular study included 316 youth in the foster care um, within Illinois, and they ranged from ages 6 to 13 years old. The sample included slightly more girls than boys at 50.5% girls and was predominantly African American. Um, and then in terms of methodology, the measures um, and variables that we'll see on the next slide were pulled from integrated assessment. So Illinois requires that a licensed mental health professional completes an integrated assessment every 45 days. And these assessments um, look into children's medical, developmental, social, psychological, educational, familial, maltreatment, and placement history. So really um, detailed and, and uh, broad in nature. 
In the sample, um, the number of integrated assessments uh, that we had completed for each participant ranged from three to 15 with an average of five integrated assessments per participant. Uh, the study utilized the Child and Adolescent Needs and Strengths Assessment, or CANS. The CANS evaluates the needs and strengths of youth across various domains, such as life functioning, strengths, and risk behaviors. All CANS items are rated from zero to three with scores of zero suggesting no evidence of a need, whereas three suggests uh, the need for immediate or intensive action. The CANS was used to measure experiences of maltreatment and items related to school and community violence were included as covariates. Uh, and then subscales capturing internalizing symptoms, externalizing behaviors and post-traumatic stress symptoms were created for the study and included as outcomes. So for internalizing symptoms that included items such as uh, related to depression, anxiety, and somatic symptoms, externalizing behavior, that subscale included items related to oppositional behavior, attention deficits, impulse control, aggression, um, just as some examples. And the post-traumatic stress symptom subscale included items such as re-experiencing, avoidance, and dissociative symptoms. Um, in terms of the data analysis, latent profile analysis in M plus was used to identify profiles of maltreatment within our sample. And then hierarchical linear modeling was used to examine the effect of profile membership on longitudinal mental health outcomes and also um, exploring age as a moderator. Okay, so in terms of our results, um, the latent profile analysis uh, showed, so essentially to start, we, we had six LPA models um, and fit statistics supported the five profile solution as the best fitting model. Um, so the five uh, profiles that we found were the largest at 50% of participants was primary neglect, followed by neglect and physical abuse at 28%, Complex trauma with severe sexual abuse at 11%, complex trauma um, with lower levels of sexual abuse at 7%, and neglect with sexual abuse at 4%. And we can see um, in this graph the differing levels of, um, of sexual abuse, physical abuse, and neglect across these five different profiles. In terms of the uh, hierarchical linear modeling outcomes, uh, so that type of analysis was used to identify the effect of profile membership on mental health outcomes. And that primary neglect profile, the largest one at 50%, um, was used as the reference or comparative group to compare the other maltreatment profiles. So all maltreatment profiles predicted higher levels of internalizing symptoms as compared to that reference group of primary neglect. Um, so we see them listed here. And when we explored age as a moderator of those relations, we used a p-value of 0 0.01 so that we would be mindful of type one error. Um, so with that threshold, um, none of the relationships between profile membership and internalizing symptoms had a significant moderation of age. Now, when we look at externalizing behaviors, um, only profiles of complex trauma um, and complex trauma with higher levels of sexual abuse predicted higher levels of internalizing symptoms as compared to the primary neglect group. When we looked at um, age as a moderator of those relations, we found that age moderated the relationship between neglect with physical abuse, um, so children in that group, and subsequent levels of externalizing behaviors. And we're gonna be looking at these graphs um, in a little bit more detail in the subsequent slides. And then finally, when we were looking at post-traumatic stress symptoms, all of the maltreatment profiles predicted higher levels of uh, post-traumatic stress symptoms as compared to the primary neglect group. And when we looked at age of, as a moderator, we also see that age moderated the, all of the relationships between profile membership and higher levels of post-traumatic stress symptoms. Um, here are some of the graphs. We see very, very similar pattern across all of them. Um, and again, we'll be looking at these a little bit more detail in the next slides. So what does this all mean for us? So 
Uh, we found that the profiles or combinations of maltreatment in this particular sample mirrored those that have been identified in prior research with a few different nuances. Um, so we found that the largest cluster of children um, experienced predominant neglect, which is similar to past studies. Um, that was then followed by the neglect and physical abuse group, which also has been a group identified in past research. Um, our sample was unique in that it had a smaller percentage of uh, children falling into the neglect with sexual abuse than other studies have identified. And also um, prior research typically just finds one um, kind of smaller size of complex trauma, whereas we had a larger um, size of complex trauma. And that actually separated into two different groups that differed in terms of the level of sexual abuse that was reported. In terms of connecting maltreatment profiles to mental health outcomes, we found a number of meaningful results. So all maltreatment profiles predicted more severe internalizing symptoms and post-traumatic stress symptoms than when children experienced predominant neglect. Because of this, professionals working with youth in the child welfare system should be careful to assess and have an eye open for symptoms such as depression, anxiety, and trauma um, or post-traumatic stress symptoms, given their diffuse connections to a range of maltreatment experiences and histories. As for externalizing behaviors, the two groups of complex trauma predicted trajectories of more severe externalizing behaviors over time. As such, youth who experience multiple forms of abuse um, may be more vulnerable to exhibiting future behavioral concerns such as aggression and attentional difficulties. This finding um, contradicts past beliefs that physical abuse and sexual abuse separately and independently predicted externalizing behaviors. And rather, it seems that there's some sort of additive effect here in that multiple types of maltreatment together can confer greater risk for externalizing behaviors um, over time. And then when we uh, look at the findings related to moderation, uh, we saw that age moderated the relation between all maltreatment profiles and post-traumatic stress symptoms which really highlights the importance of delivering trauma-informed care and services to youth in the child welfare system, regardless of age. So we're seeing these really strong connections. Um, meanwhile, the specific combination of neglect and sexual abuse as compared to neglect alone, conferred greater risk for externalizing behaviors for younger children than older children. Given that other profiles in the study included sexual abuse to some degree, there's something unique about that combination of neglect and sexual abuse that interacted with early childhood development to yield these higher levels of externalizing behaviors. Um, and when we look at the graphs, which um, we saw in the other slides, I just have one of them represented here of, um, so the solid line is the predominant neglect group, the reference group as compared to neglect with sexual abuse, and this is for externalizing behaviors. But we saw for post-traumatic stress symptoms, many of these graphs had a very similar nature. Um, so we see similar patterns across the moderation findings. So in terms of the neglect reference group, so again, the solid line, levels of mental health outcomes were less severe for younger children and then increased in severity with age. Um, this is contrasted with the comparative maltreatment group. So the different um, five profiles, or sorry, four comparative profiles that we were looking at where levels of mental health outcomes were more severe for younger children and then remained elevated with age. Um, so what that means is that younger children fared worse psychologically when exposed to profiles um, or histories that included physical and or sexual abuse as compared to neglect alone. We're seeing that big difference here. Um, this aligns with the neurodevelopmental research indicating that children's developing brains are sensitive to disruptions um, and stressful events at various sensitive periods. And so the effects of of stressful events like maltreatment um, can have differential impacts on development depending on age, type of maltreatment, and the implicated brain structures and processes. So this study suggests that the developmental stage of early childhood, so lower age, 
is particularly vulnerable to the effects of abuse, perhaps since children are still developing the cognitive and language capabilities to even be able to process these events and understand what's going on. Abuse may also serve as a more significant breach in trust and attachment um, between children and caregivers at that really early childhood young developmental stage as compared to older children. Uh, so this study had a number of strengths and limitations that are important to acknowledge. Um, so some strengths included that our sample had a wider age range, which allowed us to explore the impact of um, age and developmental stage on the psychological effects of maltreatment. Um, few studies have examined the impact of maltreatment profiles on post-traumatic stress symptoms specifically, and so our focus on that was um, a benefit. And um, a strength is that we use the integrated assessments and the CANs to provide data for our outcomes. Um, and so these are really, again, detailed, rich accounts of children's experiences and provided us with a wealth of information that likely made the data in the study more detailed and accurate as compared to perhaps self-report um, or more limited questionnaires. And um, finally, the data included here is longitudinal, which allowed us to um, look more at cause and effect and look at the interplay of these connections and relationships over time. Um, in terms of limitations, so uh, child welfare systems and practices vary across locations. And so these findings from Illinois may not generalize to other areas in the United States. So future research would benefit from exploring similar questions um, in different geographical locations and places. And also the post-traumatic stress uh, symptom subscale that we created included um, symptoms that do not map directly onto those of PTSD. And so future research may um, look at that more specifically uh, and see whether PTSD is something that is, has similar patterns of what we see with post-traumatic stress symptoms in this study. So thank you so much for joining me and listening to this presentation today um, and have a great holiday.